Martin McCann, welcome to the Galway Film Plan. Thanks for having me, Olaf. Yeah. Do you go to many film festivals? Uh, well, I go, I've been to the Galway Film Festival, I think, uh, for the last four or five years, maybe bar one of the years. You so. had a short last year, uh, Boogaloo and Graham. Boogaloo and Graham, directed yeah. by Michael Lennox, mm -hmm. uh, one of Northern Ireland's other great directors, uh, along with Stephen Fingleton, who directed The Survivalist, obviously. But uh, yeah, Michael's a personal friend of mine. And, uh, I did it with the wonderful Charlie McKenna, mm -hmm. who's another uh, one of the great female actresses from Ireland, and uh, two chickens and two kids. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, completely upstaged by two chickens. <laughs> I loved every minute of it. Do you do many short movies and you know, sort of indie um, projects? I try. I try to do. Not, you try not to do as many short films as <laughs> you do features yeah. because features pay you and short films don't. And usually you do short films as favors for friends or or as a passion project or as an emotional, emotional commitment. But, um, you know, you don't want your CD littered with shorts, but you do want to keep doing them um, yeah. and keep the, oil, uh, you know, the wheels oiled and um, either help friends or work with Alexa Michael Lennox in a short that is completely warranted and you learn from and uh, is Oscar nominated and BAFTA winning, you know, that you can't, you know, you'd be crazy to turn a short down like that. Sure. Um, we first met five years ago on the set of Killing Bono in Belfast. Uh, that's right, that's right. Um, did you meet Bono afterwards? Did you discuss? Uh, no, you're but quite convincing as him. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, the funny thing, I, I studied a lot of his footage when he was young, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and when he was young, in a lot of his interview footage, um, he had kind of an American twang, you know. There was an yeah. American, a lot of American. Thank you very much. <laughs> and, and when I sort of copied you know, Bono, when he was around 18, 19, 20, 21, uh, they all watched the film in Australia. I think they were touring Australia at the time. And obviously, they had known that the film was going on and had a little bit of vested interest in it and stuff and gave the music and stuff for it. But they all watched it together. And uh, apparently, Bono said, I didn't speak like that. And uh, apparently, uh, the rest of them says, you did. <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> he did. <laughs> when you were so younger, you, had, you sounded more American you then, yeah, yeah. then than you do now, you know, so... No guest list for you. Exactly. <laughs> no guest yes, list for me, yes. exactly. Uh, you're in Galway with The Survivalist, so tell us about that movie. Uh, it's one of the best projects I've ever been involved in. Uh, I'm very proud of it. Um, directed by Stephen Fingleton, a first-time feature director. Um, I first met Stephen on his short, or, or, or when I watched his short film at the Galway Film Festival. Um, no, actually, I first met him when he came to a screening of Jump, which I did a few years ago. Um, Charlene was also in that, um, directed by Kieran J. Walsh. Uh, and um, then, uh, so I met Stephen briefly at that, and then I met him here at the Galway Film Festival, and he mentioned a short film called Magpie, which was a precursor to the feature film, The Survivalist. Um, it was basically a short film made for the BFI to prove that it was a film worth making and the, 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 you know, to get the feel and texture, the, the experience. And, um, you know, he, so he cast me in that after meeting him here in Galway, actually, and, uh, at the film, at the flat. And, uh, and then, then, then he sent me this script called The Survivalist and I read it and I was like, you're kidding me, you know. It was a much more powerful script than, than the short, in my opinion. Um, and I thought, I went, what, man, that's amazing. Yeah. And I, I was like, I was so jealous because I thought, my God, he ever gets this main role. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. And and, uh, and I I genuinely didn't think they were going to give it to me. I thought they would have, they would have handed it out to some sort of star or some, yeah. you know, somebody famous or one of those names. And and uh, and they gave it to me, the fools. So I'm very thankful, very lucky, and uh, happy. You know? And what kind of research did you, did you do for that movie? Well, I read a couple of books that Stephen gave to me, mm -hmm. all very morbid and very depressing. Right. Um, was The uh, Road one of them? Uh, no, no, The Road wasn't one of them, but I'd watched the film The Road, which is, which is a brilliant film, but, uh, but that was, uh, um, I'd already watched that, funnily enough. Um, but no, there were, there were some, there were factual books uh, on sort of the collapse of oil and uh, political books, and um, I think he wanted me to feel a sense that this was, you know, <laughs> the end of the world is now, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, so, so anyway, um, and then I did like a week's, like, s Northern Irish survival course where they take you out into the forest and they kind of leave you to fend for yourself with a knife and a, a box of matches and you okay. have to build your own hut and tent and MacGyver style, <laughs> MacGyver style or Bear Grylls style, so I did a week of that, 
And uh, it doesn't help with the acting, but it certainly, you know, if you skin a rabbit at that, then by the time you go on set and you're told to lift up the rabbit and skin it, you're not exactly in the dark, you know. So, yeah. so little confident, confidence things like that. I did the same for the, the Pacific where they just give you a gun and send you on a two-week boot camp to get bullied by Texan Marines, you know. That was produced by Steven Spielberg. Um, mm. Did you meet him? I did meet him. I met him in L.A. and he auditioned me. and. Uh, uh, yeah, auditioned me in front of like a, a panel of like 11 people, me and a few other American actors, Joe Mazzello and James Blasdale, and uh, sent me home and then I got called two weeks later. I was in Belfast on the Falls Road and I got a call from my agent saying that he, that he cast me, so I went to Australia for 10 months and did that. So it was a good, good, a good gig. Excellent. And one of my first ones, actually. And just staying with Belfast, okay, you were born and raised in Belfast, mm. but you have no formal training as an actor, do you? No, but I've been doing it from when I was 10 years of age. That was your mother? My mother got me into it. She sent me out into a black taxi. Uh, black taxi sent me down the Falls Road and said, get into drama, because if you don't do something, you'll get into trouble. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so, I did, so I did that and uh, went to the Rainbow Factory and did all the usual sort of, you know, played the Artful Dodger, Bugsy Malone, and all those sort of amateur dramatics and yeah. stuck with it every year. Uh, but you were in a Clockwork Orange, weren't you? Uh, uh, yes, uh, as part of the Belfast uh, Theatre <coughs> Festival. and. Uh, um, a producer came along to watch that and uh, met me after. I played, I played Alex in that, and then she says, Richard Attenborough's doing a film here in Northern Ireland, and I'd love you to meet him. And I went uh, along and I met Richard Attenborough. And I'd only remembered him from, you know, America on 34th Street and stuff, you know, Gandhi and all of his greater directorial stuff was before my time, obviously. And uh, yeah. so I just met, went along and met this guy. He was the, the father in Jurassic Park, you know, and, and uh, and then I, you know, I went home and I started watching the films that he'd actually done and directed, and some of the. And funnily enough, uh, obviously he's, he's passed now, but the studio that I'm actually working on at the minute, or had worked in, in Cardiff, um, is, is called Dragon Studios, and I, I did the Bastard Executioner, which is a, a, a drama and for a television. Series, yeah. But he he was one of the founders of that um, studio. He set that studio up along with someone else, and uh, it never got finished. Uh, under his hands, but he set it up, and if it wasn't for him setting it up, I wouldn't have that job as well. Yeah. So he's uh, his impact, his impact is far reached, you know. Mm -hmm. But a lot of actors are, are uh, TV is almost more more attractive to actors than, than movies are now. So how do you feel about that? Certainly now. I mean, I'm only 31, but I know growing up as a kid, you wouldn't. It would be very rare that you would see a big movie star on TV. You know, and when it did happen, you thought, oh, his career's going down the pipes, you know. Yeah. Um, but now it's the dumb thing because TV is equally as, as, as good as films now. Mm -hmm. um, there's no real distinction in quality. I mean, certainly the quality of films generally has to be better because there's a lot more time and a lot more writing on it. Well, not even a lot more writing on it, but, you know, you have one shot of the film and you have to go through all the festivals and it's... There's a lot of competition out there, whereas usually TV, you've got these big networks and you're guaranteed a slot, you're guaranteed a time frame on TV. Yeah. Um, but now all that's gone, the business has completely changed, you know. The quality has to be up there. And just finally, uh, any advice for aspiring young actors or actresses out there? Keep doing it, and if you love it and you enjoy it, um, make the connections, make friends along the way, get yourself an agent. If you haven't got an agent, get into some sort of local theatre, amateur theatre. Um, focus on the work, focus on material, enjoy it, ask some of your friends who may be a little bit further down the line or down the game, you know, how did they get maybe a role in this or how did they do this and, and find their, their stories and kind of carve a little path for yourself. And if you love it, you'll keep going and if you love it, you'll be good at it and if you're good at it, you'll make a career out of it, hopefully. Martin, thanks so much for talking to us. No worries, thank you.